Hello Run 11 community, welcome to another Unplugged with me Sean and today we're going to be talking about autos and manuals and why everyone who says manuals are the best are wrong. So as you're probably aware I have a 996 Carrera 2 manual and one of the reasons why I bought the 996 manual Carrera 2 was because of the purity of it. It's my first 911 and personally for me, it's something very important to have as pure an experience as I can for my money's worth. Now I was fortunate enough to learn to drive using a manual and I've had a series of manual cars in the past. My parents on the other hand, die hard autos and they seem to really hate driving because they were old school Honda manuals, which if anyone's driven one, you need planning permission to change gears, such as the time between gears. Anyway, so I didn't have much in the way of being able to learn as a kid growing up or anything. But since then, loads and loads and loads of manuals. Now, as the market has changed massively and it will continue to change, fewer cars are coming out with a manual option. And what you have instead is an auto or a dual clutch transmission or a really schnazzy ZF eight speed gearbox option. A lot of the bigger or talk your cars. And we're quite fortunate that the brand that we love and adore, Porsche, have probably the best dual clutch transmission going, the PDK. Don't get me to pronounce it in German because I have no idea how to pronounce it. So f fortunately, they have the three letters PDK that we can work with. Yet still, this wonderful gearbox gets an awful lot of hate. And when you have two identical cars next to one another, let's say GT cars, one's a manual and one's a PDK, everyone pipes up and says, oh yeah, manual for me. Now, it's not so much the fact that you're kind of choosing the manual over the PDK. Everyone's got a preference and a choice. I just think there's a lot of people that talk about driving a manual car over a, an auto, a PDK or something like that, who fancy themselves as Jeremy Clarkson or Chris Harris. And it's the same brigade that tell their mates down the pub when they were going round the country roads with a dab of oppo. Dab of oppo. Fuck that. Trying to look like some kind of Henry Catchpole. When in reality, they crunch through the gears more than a learner driver. Okay, maybe I'm taking the, the mick a little bit too much there. But if the manual's that good, why are there so many PDKs and automatics being bought? Okay, so let's look at the dual clutch transmission, dual clutch transmission, dual crutch. <laughs> Please, more people than one. Dual clutch transmission was first introduced in motorsport. Now, I'm right in thinking it was either Audi or Porsche. I think it was Porsche with the 962 that came up with the concept. But then Audi had it as well in the S1 Group B Quattro. And the reason for it was a sequential gearbox and it was quicker changing gears. It is a manual gearbox. In actual fact, if we look at later on when it was first introduced in the modern day car, which was 2003 in the UK, we had it in a 
Mark 1 TT 3.2, DSG, direct shift gearbox. In Europe, you can get the R32 Golf with that gearbox. And the whole point of it was, you have all the benefits of a manual, be it acceleration, fuel consumption, feel, especially when changing gears, but the ease of use of an automatic. What was interesting though, was on the early cars in the UK, the DVLA kinda had a moment because on all V5s, and I'm sure a few of you can testify to this as well, they were showing up DSG cars as manual, even though it doesn't have a clutch, or a foot clutch at least. It has no clutch and you slip it into drive or sport. So when people may have been stopped, now I don't know if this ever happened, but if people were stopped and they had an automatic only license and they check up and it's like, well, you're not allowed to drive this, it's a manual, there were some problems. But it is a manual gearbox. But subsequently, if you look at logbooks now, anything DSG dual clutch is classified as an automatic to cover their uh, backsides. Now, a lot of negativity came about the gearbox because it wasn't as um, reliable, let's say, as a manual, less to go wrong. But this is 17 years ago now, over 17 years since the, those cars were released and DSG gearbox and subsequently the PDK have improved dramatically, a lot more reliable, great on fuel, better acceleration, a lot more feel, and they sell like hotcakes. You know, when I was selling cars, the amount of autos I would sell over manuals, it was, it was unreal. C63S looked quite nice. And yet, there's still people that are negging out autos, which makes no sense to me. Now, I drove a PDK 991.2 around the Experience Center at Silverstone a few years back. It was a CE2. It was well, it was remarkable for me because it was a 991. But apart from that, it was just just what you run of the mill Carrera, I suppose. It was an amazing car to drive, and I loved how quick the PDK box reacted. It felt quicker than the DSGs that I'm more familiar with in S-Tronics, and. It was, I was left thinking to myself, do you know what? This is such an easy car to drive. It would be the perfect everyday car. Because I don't know about you, when I have a manual, when I drive my 996, and I come up to traffic, I bloody hate driving my car. Actually, I, I'm not driving my car. I'm trying to move it gently forward. But having a lightweight flywheel and still getting used to it after like 10 months, I sometimes store the car and look like a right old noob. No ego here, you see. What can you do? Well, have a DSG or a, a PDK box. Now, if this car came in a PDK, if the 996 had a PDK, and please, I'm not knocking the auto 996 lot, I would probably have opted for a PDK. But like I said, the whole point of PDK, it came about through motor racing. If you want to have your hands on the steering wheel at all times, and you are smacking through those gears and accelerating hard, and you are really like pushing the car, you want PDK. You're not going to be having your hands taken away from the steering wheel at any point whatsoever. You change up and change down. You can even drop the clutch by pushing 
both paddles on the steering wheel in on the PDK, which makes it a wicked box. So you can actually get some tail slides out if you're skillful enough, I suppose. Again, I've not tried it. I'd like to. So if anyone's got a PDK car and a massive car park, let me know in the comments below. It is a race bred gearbox. Yesterday I was at RPM Technic and I got to meet Tim Harvey, as in uh, BTCC and Porsche Cup winning driver. And what an absolute gent, wonderful dude he is. And he was talking to Greg Daly uh, about his 991.2 GT3. And bearing in mind, Tim Harvey has been driving some of the coolest cars in the world, race cars as well, won numerous trophies. And his daily 991.2 GT3 is not manual, it's PDK. Do you know why? Because it's better than the manual. Better for what he needs it for. Just in case you're looking at me going, shut the hell up, Sean, what do you know? But if a race driver is willing to have an everyday car as a PDK box, with a PDK box, and he's willing to, to really drive it, and this man drives his car hard everywhere, including the racetrack, then there's got to be some truth to it that the box is indeed more fitter for purpose for these things. Why in the first iteration of the GT3 did they not even give a manual box as an option? It was just PDK. It's happening whether we like it or not. We may not be able to have new cars with manual boxes. And in fact, we will have no need for gearboxes. If we look at electrification, the most you'll get is two speeds. And that's only to reduce the amount of power, because as we know with electric motors, torque is instant, is to reduce that amount of power straight off the launch. Otherwise, depending on how powerful those electric motors are, the car will split. Or you'll just end up in a massive ball of smoke, which for some people that'd be a lot of fun, I suppose. But we are moving away from gearboxes altogether. There's no need for them, except for aiming forward and then aiming back. So where does that leave the manual? Well, cars are changing now, aren't they? You know, like I've just said with electrification, that's a big change, isn't it? won't be able to hear the sounds of our engines or the engines will make a slightly different sound so we'd have to make our own engine sounds perhaps not with cars becoming safer you know you have brands like funny enough ones in front of me Volvo dry you know limiting their cars to speeds of like 115 miles an hour which I think it's farcical. If you're gonna reduce the speed or limit it, limit it at 70 miles an hour, what's the point? You know, you can't drive faster than that legally in the UK, so it's just to kind of say, oh, look, we're trying to be safe. No, you're not, you're trying to be idiots. So well done, Volvo. But cars are changing, they're getting safer. People want transport solutions rather than to own a car which is sad in some way, but then the whole ownership cycle of owning a vehicle these days, and the people don't buy them, people lease them, you know, as an option for me, if I wanted a, a hack and I wanted carefree motoring, I would probably PCP or contract hire a car because, you know, I'd only be using it as an appliance. So I want ease of use which means there's gonna be a lot more automatics out there. Where does that leave manuals? Well, fortunately, we're still allowed to drive old cars for the time being. Which means, don't worry folks, I'm somewhere in Mexico. You know, we're still able to drive old cars which, which means that we can still get our manual kicks from these wonderful classics. So in closing, manual boxes are amazing, but PDK boxes are just as cool. And I don't mind a tip. 
I think the Tiptronics aren't bad. I was chasing a 964 a few months ago, almost like eight months ago now, in the Welsh Valleys in this car. And he left me for dust. He knows his car on the back of his hand, I'll give him that. Michael from Moss Automotive. I couldn't keep up with him. Standard car. If you know how to drive a Tiptronic, I'm sure you could drive it very, very fast, and very, very hard. Don't always look at 0 to 60 times. That's pub talk, where you can keep your dab of oppo comments. Thank you so much for listening today's. Thank you so much for watching today's Unplugged. If you like the subject matter, let's talk about it. Comment below. If you don't like the subject matter and you want to start an argument with me, even better. Let's talk about it below in the comments. Remember, I always invite conversation. It's important and great to flesh it all out together. So if you know anyone with a 996 C2 Tiptronic who'd be willing to let me drive the vehicle to see how it feels compared to my manual, I want to know for myself and be able to give you reliable information as to whether or not shade should be thrown at a Tiptronic over a manual. Forget the PDK stuff for a moment. If you have any suggestions over what subject you want me to talk about for the next Unplugged, Porsche related, then let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this Unplugged video, we've got more for you to see where I talk about purists up here. If you want to see what wheels I bought, but also the do's and don'ts of buying your next wheels. Links up there as well. And if you love what you saw, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching. Be safe, be good, and much love.